So the first projection we're going to do is for the dens. We're going to do the Fuchs method first and then the AP open mouth. Your dens projections should have a 10 by 12 crosswise cassette in the bucky. So I'm just going to have you close your eyes real quick. Open my light field to begin at that 10 by 12. Turn that light up. So for your first image, you're going to have your patient for the Fuchs extend the chin upwards and the centering is going to be just distal to the tip of the chin. So touch the tube, touch the bucky, true AP, just distal to the chin, not much to this one, and then calming down to a smaller field size. Typically it's supposed to be at a 5x5. Five five. I don't expect you, those of you that are in my class, to do that right away in lab. You can leave the longitudinal calmation or the transverse calmation open a little bit so that you can fit this within the light field. But again, true AP standing position, chin elevated, make sure that that centering is right on the MSP, just distal to the chin, and that is how you would perform a Fuchs method. That's just to see that denser odontoid. This projection is not recommended if there's any uh, suspicion of fracture. If there is, we're going to do the AP open mouth. So I'm going to let you relax your head. In this projection, you're aligning the mastoid tip of the base of the cranium and the upper incisors. So I always take my hands and I feel the back of the patient's cranium and right below those zygomatic arches and just tilt a little bit till those fingers are aligned parallel to one another. Almost everybody goes down just a tiny bit. So again, feeling those two spots, making sure we're nice and aligned. Close your eyes for me real quick. Perfect. I'm just going to preemptively align to where I feel like this is going to end up. Because you don't want to have the patient's mouth open any longer than it needs to be, simply because it's very uncomfortable. A lot of, uh, a lot of patients have TMJ or other jaw dysfunctional problems, leaving that mouth open for extended periods of time is going to be very uncomfortable. So I'm gonna shift again just right on that MSP. Holding that face in place, I'm gonna have you open your mouth as wide as you can. Centering goes straight through that open mouth. Again, my marker within the light field on a 10 by 12 crosswise cassette, and that's how you would do an AP open mouth. Both of these 40 inch SID, Again, crosswise cassettes, centering to that open mouth for this image. You could tell your patient to phonate, ah, if necessary. Yeah, you go right ahead and shut your mouth. That sounded rude. <laughs> In a good way, shut her mouth because she can relax. So that is your DENS projections. From here, I'm going to do the AP axial C-spine. This is a 10 by 12 lengthwise, and you're going to use a 15 to 20 degree cephalic angle aiming at C4. So I'm going to have you step to the side for me for two seconds. I always like to make sure that my collimated field is open to the correct size. Since we are not in a digital room, I'm just going to get that all set up first. Come right back in. And this image is centering at C4. For this image, you also need your AML, which is right below the nose, to your EAM perpendicular to the IR, so I'm just going to have her elevate her chin slightly, get that line perpendicular, centering approximately where an Adam's apple would be, but that's for C4. I'm going to come up just a touch on the mid-sagittal plane, again touch the tube, touch the bucky, get her right here, and right about there. Get my marker back on the cassette. 40 inch SID, again 15 to 20 degrees cephalic, AML aligned perpendicular to the IR, centering at C4 with a 10 by 12 lengthwise cassette. And that would be your AP axial C spine. So for our next set of projections for AP oblique, this is one that students sometimes struggle with simply because of the distance change. Anytime you're working with the C spine, if you're in true AP position, you're at 40 inches. The second you start rotating that patient, you need to go back to 72 because of that magnification between the shoulder and the spine. So I'm at 72. In an AP oblique, just like your AP axial, you're gonna be at 15 to 20 degrees cephalic. 
So I'm going to make that adjustment. And realign my tube and bucky. And then I'm going to have my patient come right on in. And then either one, I'm just going to start with an LPO because that's what I feel like will be seen best on this video. A little bit more for me. Perfect. Rotate your patient 45 degrees. Make sure their feet are under their shoulders. If they have their feet straight and you turn their upper body, the feet are kind of your homing plane. So they're going to rock back to true AP a little bit. You're not going to have that true 45. So just make sure you have that full rotation. And then again, you're centering at C4. So I'm going to shift my patient for just a little bit. And then turn it just a little bit less. Perfect. Actually, take one more baby step forward. Beautiful. And then we'll go right there. And I'm going to come up just a little bit because, again, C4 is our entrance point. Touch the two, touch the bucky. Like always, I'm going to say it a million times. Palmate down. Same thing with this one, you're just wanting kind of that proper head position, so just elevate it slightly just so that you're getting the mandible out of the vertebral bodies, but not far enough back where the occipital is getting into the spine process area. Put that marker down on the side that's against the image receptor. So right now I'm in LPO, so I want my left marker against the image receptor. Again, 15 to 20 degree cephalic angle, aiming at C4. Align your bucky, and that's all there is to this one. Same, this would be the exact same if I did RPO, just rotating the other direction. Okay. Last few images are for laterals. So I'm just going to rotate my patient to true 90. This utilizes a perpendicular beam. If I had one readily available, the idea for this is to have sandbags affixed to the wrist so that you can actually have those shoulders get pulled down a little bit more effectively because what happens is the thickness of the humeral heads makes it so that you can't see that uh, C7, T1 area well. So you're going to line up again, align your tube and bucky, get that patient in true lateral, and then if you don't have sandbags, which you will when you're in the real world, but if you don't, um, the other thing that you always do for laterals is to use a breathing technique. So anytime you're working with a patient, let them know the breathing technique, maybe before you do it, just so that they can anticipate it. You don't want to do anything in the middle of a breathing process. They could just be out of their normal cycle if you do that. So for this, I'd have them taken a deep breath, blow it all the way out, hold your breath out, and that's when I would expose. So you can breathe, but again, make sure they're in true lateral. Centering still at C4, just like I said, everything but the dens is going to be at C4. And that is your lateral C-spine. And again, deep expiration hold for this image. The other two projections for the lateral, bend your head down for me. That is full flexion, nice and easy. And then other way, all the way back, that is full extension. So those are the three options for your lateral at 72 inches, perpendicular beam to C4. All of those laterals are an option for your proficiencies.